Welcome everyone to our First United Church service again on May 3rd, the first Sunday of May uh, 2020. We certainly have had a wonderful weekend so far. I hope people have been out enjoying the warm temperatures as best they can and getting out a little bit. As we come together and have like fellowship time right now, are there, uh, do, do people have any news or announcements they want to share? Of course, I have some that I always have, but is there anything that the, anyone would like to wish to share right now, words of welcome or announcements? Yes. Yep. And um, that that committee will, as soon as we have stuff, share information with the congregation. So we'll keep everyone up to date, right, Deborah? You bet. <laughs> In case not everyone could hear Deborah, um, she was saying that we, as a church, are not actually going to be coming back to our services here in the congregation next Sunday. We are not prepared for that, nor is that in line with uh, the advice that we have received from the Bishop O of the United Methodist Church or our governor. And so we are establishing a reopening committee to set a plan in place for us. Um, and as you know, via the letter that was sent out, that's going to be at least through May 30th that we will be postponing in-person worship. Does anybody have any questions about that? I do want to make an open space for anybody who has any questions about that. All right. Are there any other words of welcome or announcements to be shared today? Otherwise, I have a couple of announcements. Um, <clears throat> Normally this time of year, a bunch of groups in town get organized together and do a big mass cleanup of people's yards and everything like that and really get things prepared for the citywide collection of yard stuff on May 8th. Um, due to the current season that we are in of social separation and isolation, they aren't organizing that the same way. But I did receive notice that they're trying to do kind of an effort like our church, our city type thing. But they're really leaving it up to the individual churches. So that being said, if there were a group of people within our church who had yard work that they needed done, and there were a group of people in our church that were willing to go and do that following safe um, isolation practices, then that would be something that we could organize individually. Uh, however, it's not going to be more of, as much of a citywide effort as in years past. I will let you know that if people are interested in that, that supplies are being made available through the school district, which is really cool that they still want to help support it because that's who usually helps organize it. So. Um, Send me an email if that's something that you need or are interested in, and we can see what uh, it looks like for our congregation. But I just wanted to update people on what those efforts were looking like this year. Secondly, I wanted to share this now, but I'm certainly going to bring it up during our time of prayers for the community as well. But um, Jean Samuelson is in the last moments of her life right now. And um, I have had not had a chance to connect with the family yet this morning to see if it is still today, but 
uh, in visiting with them yesterday. Um, she is going to heaven soon, and so please keep her in your prayers. Please keep the family, and John and Kim and Jeff and Sam and Mac and everyone in your family, uh, of the family in your prayers uh, in this difficult time. Okay. Any other words to share of welcome or announcements to make? Then I will. I'm sorry, Heather, go ahead. Um, I just wanted to share some good news. Uh, one of my best friends from childhood, her grandmother was diagnosed with um, COVID 19 two weeks ago. Uh, she's 94, and she's now had her second negative test. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> that is good news. There is hope yeah. for all of us. <laughs> Thank you, Heather, for sharing that. <laughs> What's that, Gary? <laughs> well, keep Gary in your prayers then, because Deborah says there's no hope for him, so. <laughs> All right, well, let us um, now begin our service as we come together here as First United and join in this moment of reflection to center ourselves and prepare ourselves for worship today. prepared for worship, let us now share in our call to worship. Were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road? With hearts on fire, we come here today, God. Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place there in these days? With astonished hearts, we come today, God. Oh, how foolish you are, and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. With hearts wide open, we come here today, God. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to them. With hearts blessed and forgiven, we come here today, God. And let us join in our prayer of invocation adapted from Psalm 116 as we pray this together. God, whom I love, hear my voice and my supplications. Incline your ear toward me as I call on you as long as I live. I suffer distress and anguish and so call upon your name. O Lord, as I pray for you to save my life, gracious are you, merciful God, for you have delivered me from death and have brought my soul rest. Be with me now as I try to walk through the land of living as a child of yours, for I am your servant and offer all thanksgiving to you. I lift up my hands and heart to sing praises to you, and in the presence of all your people gathered here today, 
I vow to eternally be yours. Praise the Lord. Amen. Our opening hymn this morning then comes from Worship and Song 3179 and is called The Risen Christ. This is our opening hymn. And now let us share a moment of God's peace. Again, this is something we normally would share with one another as we went around and gave each other a sign of peace with each other present here. But in this moment, take a moment to pray. Pray for peace for those on your heart you know by name. Pray for peace for those who you know need peace. Pray for this world, which we all know could use God's peace. Let us share this moment of peace. And let all God's people say, Amen. We now come to our prayer of confession. Let us, with confessed hearts, pray this prayer together. How convicting it is, blessed God, to know what we are supposed to do, to know the scriptures we know, to have the history we have of your life and teaching, and yet to still sin. How angry it must make you to have to offer us grace upon grace upon grace, and yet still have us turn away. But gracious and forgiving God, these are our human understandings and failings. Praise and thanks be to you that your grace is greater than our humanity, 
your forgiveness deeper than our failure, your love more eternal than our finitude. Guide us to return and remember you are our God and we are yours. Amen. Hear now these words of assurance. The blessing of the table of sacrifice is that there is a place for you and for me. The confessed and repentant heart is one that finds comfort and peace in the grace of Jesus Christ. Sit, eat, drink, and trust that you are indeed forgiven and freed. Amen. Our scripture readings this morning, our first reading comes from the book of Acts, chapter 2, verses 42 through 47. Hear now these words from Acts. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers. Awe came upon everyone because many wonders and signs were being done by the apostles. All who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their possessions and goods and distribute the proceeds to all as any had need. Day by day, as they spent much time together in the temple, they broke bread at home and ate their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having the goodwill of all the people. And day by day, the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. Our second reading comes from the book of 1 Peter, chapter 1, verses 17 through 23. If you invoke as Father the one who judges all people impartially according to their deeds, live in reverent fear during the time of your exile. You know that you were ransomed from the feudal ways inherited from your ancestors, not with perishable things like silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Christ like that of a lamb without defect or blemish. He was destined before the foundation of the world, but was revealed at the end of the ages for your sake. Through him you have come to trust in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory, so that your faith and hope are set on God. Now that you have purified your souls by your obedience to the truth, so that you have genuine mutual love, Love one another deeply from the heart. For you have been born anew, not of perishable, but of imperishable seed, through the living and enduring word of God. All right, it's time for our children's message, so I'm going to ask the children to come forward. If you have children or you want to come forward for the children's message, just go ahead and unmute yourself. Romaine family, I already unmuted you. Uh, I saw the Lods in here too. They are unmuted. Yep. And anyone else, if you want to join in and answer questions for the children, you feel free here. But children, I'm going to put my screen back up and I want you to tell me what you see on the screen. What do you see on the screen? Uh, flower growing. Some plants. Some plants, a flower growing. What did you say, Lods? Plants growing. Yeah. And what else do you see? Someone, someone, someone dripping water on the plant. A hand with water. Yeah. What else do you see? Dirt. Dirt. Yeah. The soil. The soil. Yeah. yeah. Children's message. You see words on the screen. That's a children's message. <clears throat> They're very good. Nothing you escape nothing escapes you children. I appreciate that very much. So what is the children's message then since you brought that up? Why have this picture today? Because everything's growing? <laughs> yeah, everything is growing. Why else? Because it shows how things grow, just like children grow up. Yes. What else? Why would we? What is the children's message today that you can see here in this picture? Can you give 
give something water or what it needs, then it will grow. Yeah. So all of those things that you all have said are very true about why we have this as a children's message today. One of the things that you cannot see is that someone had to plant a seed for these plants to grow, right? Yes. That seed planted within this soil helps this to burst forth. But does that plant grow on its own? No. No. What else does it need, lads? Yeah, water, sunlight, air. What else does it need, Romains? A tender hand, perhaps, to care for it, to till the soil, to remove any weeds that might prevent it from growing. Hmm? Yeah. So, just like this, plant that's here in this soil, the seed is planted within you all to grow and to learn and to become the wonderful people that you are already growing into. But to be honest, this children's message is also not just for you, but for our congregation as well, to say that we also have to be that hand that gently drips water upon that soil to help you all grow. And then when you sprout and you grow, what do you turn into? What plant would you want to be? A nurse. A nurse. Mm -hmm. A teacher. A teacher. Mm -hmm. No, no, no idea from behind me. Prescott doesn't know. The beautiful thing is that I thought you guys were going to say plants and you started to name vocations. That is amazing. That, that's the kind of flower or thing that you want to grow into. And I think that's wonderful. But it does take nurturing soil. It takes nurturing water and air and sun. And it takes hands to nurture you along the way. But we haven't mentioned the most important thing of all. We've only kind of mentioned it. What else does it take? Love. And love from who? God. God. The love of God that you can't see in this picture that was planted within you at the moment of your creation. That when you burst forth, when you are watered and given sunlight and air and nurturing hands to grow, that indeed you can flourish and become whatever God created you to be. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right. I'm going to go back to the screen and, and uh, mute everyone here, and then we'll say our prayer. Let us pray together. Lord, thank you that these indeed are your plants that will be growing upon the earth. Our children, seeds planted within the soil of this congregation, seeds planted within the various soils of your world, that they could grow and be nurtured by your tender, caring love, by our tender, caring church, and that through proper watering, sunlight, air, weeding of the soil, yes, but also the tender touch of loving hands, they could grow and be whatever you have called them to be, God. And when we think about the children of our congregation and what this means for them, our hearts are afire with what it also means for us. For you have called us all in the same, same way. It's in your Son's name we pray, God. Thanks be to you. Amen. And we hope our children grow into all of those things. Amen, congregation? <laughs> All right, I'm going to mute everyone again here and we'll get back to our, our worship service here. <clears throat> our second hymn then, now that we will sing, is O Thou Who This Mysterious Bread. It's in the Methodist hymnal number 613 and the words will be either in your packet that you've been provided or on the screen. This is O Thou Who This Mysterious Bread.
Our gospel reading today comes from the book of Luke, chapter 24, verses 13 through 35. Hear now these words from the gospel of Luke. Now on that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them. But their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, What are you discussing with each other while you walk along? They stood still, looking sad. (coughs) Excuse me. Then one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered him, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place there in these days? He asked them, What things? And they replied, the things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet, mighty in deed and word, before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, some women of our group astounded us. They were at the tomb early this morning. And when they did not find his body there, they came back and told us that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see him. Then Jesus said to them, Oh, how foolish you are and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things? and then enter into his glory? Then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself in all the scriptures. As they came near the village to which they were going, he walked ahead as if he were going on. But they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, because it is almost evening, and the day is now nearly over. So Jesus went in to stay with them. And when he was at the table with them, he took bread, blessed it, and broke it, and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, Were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us? That same hour they got up and returned to Jerusalem, And they found the eleven and their companions gathered together. And they were saying, The Lord has risen indeed, and he has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road, and how he had been made known to them in the breaking of the bread. This is the word of our Lord. Let us pray. God, thank you indeed for all the ways you make yourself known to us. 
Open our hearts and our mind and our ears to your message. And as always, God, may our worship here today and always be pleasing unto you. Amen. <clears throat> It must be Jesus. This painting you see here on your screen is from an artist called, named James Tissot and is titled The Pilgrims of Emmaus on the Road. And for those who cannot see it, there are two pilgrims talking with Jesus, although we know from our scripture that they do not know it is him yet. The moment captured in the painting is of Jesus telling them everything about the law and the prophets and about himself. What is intriguing to me is the consternation on the face of these travelers, these disciples of Jesus, these people on the road to Emmaus as they process what they have just experienced are visi and are visibly still thinking about the prophecy that Jesus is telling them. Only again to have this traveler tell them about Moses and the prophets and Jesus and everything that they should be feeling. It must be Jesus. What made me think about this in connection with the road to Emmaus gospel we have for ourselves today is the idea that these disciples, people who had been in the presence of Jesus, had walked with him before, had traveled many roads as part of Jesus' chosen ones, these disciples were so caught up in thinking about what had just happened to them and so concerned about what was to come that they could not even slow down enough to recognize their hearts burning inside of them. And they could not hear that it was Jesus unveiling the scriptures to them. If these two disciples who had physically walked with Jesus, perhaps even touched Jesus when he was alive, could not recognize and slow down and listen and realize that they were once again in the presence of their Savior, then what chance do we have? makes me figure and ask questions like, what are we missing out on right now? Right now as we hurry through our days with nowhere to go. Right now as we worry through our days with anxiety and fear. Right now as we come together and worship and yet are already possibly thinking about what we are going to do today, tomorrow, or this week. Right now as we are journeying with Jesus through life and yet cannot recognize our hearts burning at the sound of his scripture, at the presence of his being, at the table which we are about to share. It must be Jesus. We live in the 21st century with all our modern gadgets and gizmos to be able to do church via the internet, telephone, television, you name it, and yet we still imagine our church being a confined space limited to walls and a roof. We have the ability to be the church through a telephone call, through the power of prayer, through the presence of sending a card or letter, and yet we still think we must be able to physically be next to someone in order for them to know how much we care. Don't get me wrong, I'm as social a being as anyone. I miss seeing you all on Sundays in person, shaking your hands, sharing a moment of fellowship over coffee or water or juice. But what Jesus is reminding us today as we journey along our road with him is that physical presence is less about physically being next to one another than what we do with that space. In other words, what good is it to be next to one another if we are also not the church when we are apart? Sure, we, there are things we are limited in doing. We cannot be open to groups or meetings or events or things of those nature. But our hearts are burning in other ways. For instance, there are more people coming to our service now than we have averaged in a long, long time. This means that more people are connecting to church now that we are closed than when we were open. People are checking in on each other more frequently than ever before. And not just others that would be considered quote-unquote friends, but people in our church community who might not ever have spoken with one another 
are reaching out and connecting. We are becoming the church that Jesus longs for us to be at all times, not just on Sundays. And I understand that this pandemic is wearing on us all. Trust me, I know how daunting this seems when I think about all the stresses and difficulties that come from being closed for yet another month. But also trust me that if we only focus on the negatives, we miss out on all the wonderful positives we are currently experiencing as a congregation. All the ways we are being called to slow down and feel our hearts burning inside of us. It must be Jesus. The reason I keep hammering on about all the ways we are being church outside of meeting within our building is because there will come a time when we can meet again. When we can be physically together once again. When we will be walking side by side with each other along our journey once more. And when we come to that time, we must not forget the lessons we learned while we were apart. We must not forget that our care for one another is not limited to physical space, but to the vast realm of the Holy Spirit where we can pray for one another, care for one another, and send love to one another in even more powerful ways than hugs, handshakes, or fist pounds. We must not forget when we can come back together to slow down and be present with one another, to take the time to listen and care for each other by truly seeking to understand and love each other. We must not forget that when we return to a time of ease and our physically close selves feel fulfilled by attending Sunday worship in our church once more, that we are called by Jesus to be the church every day of the week. That our Christianity is not limited to the presence of Jesus Christ physically with us or our presence physically with each other, but is eternal everywhere and unlimited. That wherever we go, whoever we are with, we are the hands and feet of Jesus. And if this all sounds exhausting, if this sounds like a dream which is too daunting, if all we can feel now is grief or sadness, then we must also experience those emotions and take those to God. For the loss we feel right now is true grief. The inability to extend that caring hand of love or an embrace of tenderness is difficult. The road we are on is not easy, and the walk we are amidst is troubling, filled with unknown fear and doubt. But remember, this is where Jesus met these pilgrims too. They had just experienced the physical, extremely physical departing of Jesus from their lives through his sacrifice upon the cross. They had just lost the physical representation of their rabbi, friend, and brother. And yet at the same time had heard news that Jesus was resurrected. They were processing all the cynicism and optimism all at the same time. And the grief that they must have felt on that road is almost unimaginable. But in this grief, this place of confusion, they did something at the end of our gospel for today which is remarkable. They knew the road was dangerous and that this traveler must not travel through the night. And so they invited him in to share a meal, spend the night, and be safe until he could travel during the day. And in that moment, although they had not yet realized that this was Jesus, they were the church beyond their rabbi. They were the church beyond their closed rooms. They were the church by extending care and concern for a stranger and showing compassion even if they did not know it was their Savior among them. 
And then in the breaking of bread and sharing of that table, all suddenly became known to them in a burst of a moment and in an epiphany of light. <clears throat> we are all pilgrims on the road to Emmaus. We are weary travelers worn down by our journey. We are struggling with grief, knowledge of prophets, the unknown of the future, and the, all of these experiences we get from our fellow travelers. And Jesus meets us where we are to be with us through bread, through cup, through time on our road to remind us that we are so much more than we could ever imagine. So listen. Slow down. Pay attention to your heart afire. For you are Jesus to those around you in more ways than you know. And when in doubt, when you are not sure, trust that within you, it must be Jesus. Amen. Will you please pray with me? Lord, indeed we come here today from all of our disparate places where we are. We come here today worshiping yet again via technology, whatever it may be, internet, telephone, iPad, TV, computer, you name it, we are trying it. Because, God, we miss connection. We miss that physical being of being present with one another. We miss that physical being of being present with you. And yet, God, through our gospel message today, you remind us that our hearts are still on fire if we just pay attention. That we are still burning inside of us with a flame that can never go out. That your Holy Spirit, God, is with us always to be with us wherever we are, no matter the season, no matter the virus, no matter what is going on in our lives, or no matter if our life has ended at all. We are yours eternally. And you remind us when we come to this table, when we break bread and drink cup, you break open that light to us once more and you give us that physical reminder of just what your sacrifice meant, of just what your sacrifice means. God, that we are your creation and yet you became incarnate to remind us we are your creation, to live with us, to forgive our sins through your death on the cross, and to be resurrected to life eternal so that in and through our baptism, God, we can do the very same thing. And yet, God, we come weary, worn down, for life is sometimes a struggle. And so be with us, sit with us, talk with us, remind us of that fire inside of us, and help us, God, to continue to open ourselves up to this world which needs your message of hope and love. Continue to open us up, God, to each other, to connect and stay connected. And continue to remind us, God, no matter what road we are on, that we are yours that we would go forth from this place, from this spot, from this day and every day with that blessed hope in your eternal promise. And so as we come here today, I do want to open it up to prayers of the community. Are there prayers of the community that people would like to share at this moment? Are there any prayers of the community right now?
Ted, go ahead. Harriet and I received notice that a former resident of Little Falls um, don't have permission to mention the last name, but his first name is Dave. Um, he's been diagnosed with pancreatic cancer, and so if we could pray for Dave, that would be wonderful. Prayers for Dave, who has pancreatic cancer. Certainly prayers for Jean and her family as she walks the road that leads to heaven. Prayers for thankfulness, for healing of friends and family from COVID and prayers for those who have not yet received healing or may only receive the eternal healing that comes from the balm of eternal life. Any other prayers of our community right now? Prayers for Gary for safe travels to Connecticut, Maryland, and New Jersey, and home. All right, and as I mute everyone back on mute, may we join all of these prayers with the prayers of our hearts, which are too deep for words to reach as we join our prayers in uh, silent prayer now. And let us join all our prayers together as we join in the prayer of our Savior. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who have sinned against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen indeed. <clears throat> we now come to a time of Holy Communion, a time for us to gather together once more around this table and this bread and this cup, the table that Jesus so graciously has shared with us in our past. If you are right now wondering where your Holy Communion is, uh, please do go gather it if you have not already. We will share bread and cup here, and we will bless all of the breads and all of the cups and all of the whatevers we have as we celebrate Holy Communion from afar and have to do things this way. Here at First United Church, I usually take this moment of invitation to say that our table is open to everyone. Our table is open to all people who are welcome to come to our table and share of this bread and of this cup. And the reason that this table is open is because Jesus has invited all of us to partake of this bread and this cup. But during our time of isolation and COVID-19, of doing this from afar over wherever we are, I want to also say all forms of of bread and cup that we will consecrate and bless today are welcome. It's not just limited to a piece of bread, a cup of wine or juice or whatever it may be. God's sacrifice, as we heard about through our message on the road to Emmaus today, is a sacrifice that spans all symbols, all times, all places. 
Let us join now in our Holy Communion prayer as we come together for Holy Communion. God, we need your Holy Communion now more than ever. We are in need of community, of being together, of being invited in, of being loved. And so we give you thanks, God of majesty and mercy, for calling us once more to this table of grace. We rejoice in that through the bread and cup of your holy table, all our breads and cups are blessed. Each time we confess, remember, and give thanks in your holy name, we rejoice in the meaning and depth of your sacrifice. That you, God incarnate, lived among us to reveal the mystery of your holy word, that you suffered and died on the cross for us, and that you were raised from death on the third day, and now live in glory forever. So that we, who are baptized in you, can also live, die, and be resurrected to life eternal. We bless you, gracious God, for the presence of your Holy Spirit in the church you have gathered wherever we may be that our table is your table, that you, Christ Jesus, offered everything for us. Amen. Our hymn of Holy Communion is Let Us Break Bread Together. It's in the Methodist hymnal, number 618, and the words will be either on your screen or in the packet you have received. This is Let Us Break Bread Together. We will sing the verses 1 through 3. As we gather here this morning, let us hear now our words of institution. On the night of his betrayal, Jesus met with the disciples in the upper room and at the table that he shared with them. He took bread and breaking it, handed it out to each of the disciples, giving it to them, saying, This is my body, broken for you. Take and eat of it and do so in remembrance of me. Likewise, at the same meal, Jesus took the cup of the fruit of the vine, and in pouring it out, he shared it with the disciples, saying, This is the blood of the new covenant, poured out for you. Take and drink of it, and do so in remembrance of me. When we eat of this bread, when we drink of this cup, when we eat of whatever we have and drink of whatever we have, 
Each time we bless it in the name of Jesus, we are reminding and living into the covenant that Christ lived, Christ died, Christ was resurrected, and Christ will come again. Let us pray. God, send down your Holy Spirit upon this, our breads and our cups, wherever we may be. Consecrate our holy meals to our bodies, that once again our flesh may be saved by your flesh, our blood renewed by your blood, that we would once again be welcomed to this table of sacrifice, this table of victory, that we, God, through your Holy Spirit, through you, Jesus Christ, and by the power of God, are once again welcomed and forgiven and freed. Amen. This is the bread of Jesus Christ broken for you. Take and eat of it and do so in remembrance of him. This is the cup of the new covenant poured out for you. Take and drink of it and do so in remembrance of Christ Jesus. This is when we would normally have you come forth and share in your elements. Please now, wherever you are, take of the bread, take of the cup, for all has been prepared. And let us now, as we are able, join in our prayer of thanksgiving. Bountiful God, we give you thanks that you restore our souls and renew our hearts. We give you thanks that nothing can come between you and your people. We thank you that you are the God of our ancestors, the God of our salvation, and the God who fills us with blessed spirit. Praise be to the ever-present, always with us, eternal love of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen indeed. We now come to a time of holy offering, a moment for us to give back out of the gifts that God has given us. Again, I remind you all that this is a time when if you normally gave by putting envelope in plate, then to please still do that now. If this is a time when you would spend this time praying because that is how you feel called to share your talents, then that is what you should do during this holy offering as well. If it's a time when you are thinking about writing down what you feel called to do in this world, what you feel called by God to share of your time, take that time now. This is holy, for this is holy offering. Let us partake.
And let us now join in our doxology together. Again, in Methodist hymnal number 94, our words will be on the screen. us now join in our prayer of dedication. Giver of gifts, we offer you all that we have, whether in plate or heart or prayer, we give it all to you. Take our offerings and multiply them upon your world, that all may come to know the love you offer at your table, in your word, and through the hands and hearts of your people. Amen. We now come to our closing hymn, God Be With You. It's the words that we're singing of this version are from the New Century Hymnal number 81. Those words will be on the screen again or in your bulletin that was sent out to you. This is God Be With You.
So indeed, let us go forth today, God with us until we meet again, God walking with us along whatever road we may be upon, God inside of us through the great gift of Jesus Christ, through the inspiration and gift of the Holy Spirit, through this wonderful table of sacrifice which we've come to once again today, that God is with us wherever we are, whomever we are, and wherever we may go. Indeed, brothers and sisters, may God's peace be with you. Amen.